great screening for self advocates. This was originally developed by uh, I believe Tika Harris, who works for DDS. Um, so I uh, just full uh, acknowledgement that I didn't make this slideshow. Um, just uh, passing it along um, because I had the uh, the slideshow, and I figured I'd share it with you guys. Um, so I'm uh, pretty passionate about uh, human rights and helping you guys be empowered to be better self-advocates, and that's what this training is all about. So I hope you enjoy it. So what are we talking about today? We're talking, going to be talking about dignity, self-determination, our human rights, exercising our human rights, limits based on our rights, and who can help me learn about my rights. My services. The services I receive should promote human dignity and self-determination. My services should meet my needs, help me to develop skills, help me to increase my independence, support me to make independent choices. So what is dignity? Dignity is when I respect myself, when I have confidence in myself, when I am proud of what I can do, when other people admire me and treat me with respect. I know that I am respected when people treat me like I'm important. People pay attention to me. People listen to me and look me in the eye. People don't interrupt me when I'm talking. People don't try to finish my sentences. People care about what I think. So a good example is if you were to go to the doctor's office, uh, we see a lot where uh, uh, an individual will go to the doctor's office with their uh, guardian or the parents or uh, whatever, another trusted adult. And occasionally the doctor will speak to the guardian rather than speaking to the individual. And that's an, a good example of treating somebody uh, not with dignity. So uh -huh. when you go to an appointment like that, while it's okay for your guardians to offer information or to help you understand what the doctor is saying and, and that kind of thing, uh, ultimately the doctor should be speaking directly to you. They should be making eye contact with you. They should be directing their questions to you. Um, and they should be listening fully. Let's say this together, or say it to yourself. I am a person. I have confidence in myself and in my abilities. People should have confidence in me. I respect myself. People should treat me with respect. What is self-determination? It's a big word. Uh, self-determination is basically the freedom to do things and make decisions about your life and the freedom to live as you choose. It's super important that uh, those of you uh, who support you uh, are giving you as much freedom as they can safely give you. Um, and it's really not something that they give you. It's something that you should already have, you know, it's assumed right. Um, so that's what self-determination is, the freedom to live your life as you choose. Let's say this together. It's my life. I know what I want. I make my own decisions. Ask me. Listen to me. I choose. So, like I said, people need to take your uh, your wishes seriously, your rights seriously, your uh, your desire to do th the things you want to do seriously. And if you feel like you're not li being listened to, you know, um, you could call your uh, service coordinator. You could talk to staff and get guidance that way uh, here at the Center of Hope. Uh, we definitely have human rights advocates here who can, you know, help to uh, help you find your voice. Uh, but obviously, if, you know, if you're not completely on board with what your plan is for your life, uh, that's a serious problem and uh, it needs to be fixed. These are my rights. I will get the services and support that I need. I where I live is my home. I am part of my community. 
I choose the activities I like. I wear the clothing I want. I keep my own stuff. I eat healthy food I like. I talk to people I want to. I get privacy. People can visit me. I should help decide which services and supports are part of my plan. My services and supports should be explained to me so that I understand what's going on. People should be respectful when I am communicate when communicating to me. I should be treated like the adult I am. So a uh, good example of this is someone emailed me, uh, one of my people on my caseload, and he wanted uh, some documents. He wanted to read over them before his ISP meeting. So of course, I sent them to him immediately because that's his right. Uh, so that he could kind of advocate for himself during the meeting and he knew what, was, what his plan was and what his uh, ISP goals were for the year um, and so that he could suggest changes if he didn't like uh, what I had written. I totally is right and I respected them. What can I do? And this is what we're talking about here. Read the plans people write about me or have someone read it with me. Ask questions. Ask people to explain what I don't understand. Ask for changes if I don't agree. Okay. Don't feel uh, don't feel uh, ashamed or afraid to stick up for yourself. If uh, we are making choices about your life that you don't appreciate or that you don't agree with, um, you should definitely say something. Home. My home should be located in a safe neighborhood. My home should be comfortable and nicely decorated. My bedroom should be decorated the way I want. So for instance, you know, do you like this style? Do you like that style? Do I like this one? What can I do? Think about what I want my room to look like. Look through magazines, go online to download pictures, take pictures of displays at stores like Jordan's or Ikea, buy things that I need, decorate my room the way I want, ask for help if needed. Okay, so you have a right to have your space the way you want your space to be. Community. I should be familiar with the community I live in. I should be part of my community. I should have opportunities to meet with other people living in my community. So you have a right to interact on the level you want to if you live, well, wherever you live. Um, those who are there to help you need to make opportunities or help you make opportunities to get in the community. And they need to make time to do that. And there needs to be a plan for that. So if you're not sure what your plan is, if you don't feel like they're not, ma not making the plans, uh, to get you in the community or you know you don't like the way it's done speak up for yourself ask to speak to your service coordinator or or whoever um but uh like i said again if you're not getting the services the way you want them um that's important what can i do take a ride around the ne local neighborhood write down the names of places i would like to visit or ask for help from a friend or family member whom i trust make a map of the neighborhood be friendly and say hello to neighbors Search online or a newspaper for events or happenings near me. Ask for help finding events and opportunities to meet people. Um, just kind of a map of your neighborhood, kind of knowing where things are and what you like to do and where you like to go. Activities. I can explore new activities to see what I like and don't like. I should be able to participate in activities that I like. I should have the opportunity to exercise and have fun every day. Sometimes people choose to participate in risky activities like skydiving and jet skiing. I should be able to participate in these types of activities too, as long as I am safe. I mean, you know, risky activities are risky. Uh, skydiving is equally risky whether you have disabilities or not. Um, so if that's something you want to do with your own money and your own time, uh, God bless you. I wouldn't do it, but you know, you have a right to do what other people do. So if that's something you want to do, um, talk to your service coordinator, talk to your staff. Talk with your garden, guardians to figure out, you know, what it is that I like to do that I'm not being allowed to do. And, you know, find out why not. What can I do? Create a list of activities I would like to participate in. Go online and search for fun things to do. Ask for ideas. Come up with a schedule and a plan for participating in these activities. Discuss my schedule and plan with my caregivers, family, friends, and ISP team. If you need help with anything, just ask. Always just ask. The squeaky wheel got three. We don't know what you want until you ask sometimes. Clothing. What I wear is my choice. I can shop at my own for my own clothes and pick out what I what think looks good. My caregiver should support me to make sure that my clothing is always neat and clean. I should have clothes for every season. 
what can I do? Look online for ma in magazines for fashion ideas. Window shop. Try different. Uh, try on different things. See if someone is wearing something I like. Yeah, it's okay to compliment them and ask where they, where I can find it. Uh, ask for opinions if I want them. You don't have to ask anybody's opinion though. Your opinions are your own. All right. What is my most prized possession? You have the right to your own stuff, your things, your place that you can keep them. You get to decide who you share these things with, and uh, nobody should force you to share them. Uh, if I buy something, it's mine. I can use my possessions whenever I want to. I should have a place to store my possessions, and I should be able to get, get my things when I want them. So people should not be holding back your things uh, for any other reason but a safety issue. Um, again, safety tends to trump everything that we do, um, but uh, nobody should be like taking away your iPad because you were being naughty or, or you, they didn't like your behavior. Right? Uh, that should not be a technique that's used to help you make better decisions. Um, certainly, if, if you were um, you know, throwing it around in a way that was harmful to others or harmful to yourself or something like that, right? then they may take it away from you for a while to develop a plan to talk to your team and figure out how we can help you be safe but really that's the only reason some, someone should be taking your things my ch kitchen cabinets and refrigerator should be full of foods that are good for me i should help with grocery shopping so that i can buy foods and drinks that i like sometimes i want to eat cookies and ice cream and that's okay so again you have the right to eat what you want um Yes, or, you know, you may be on a, uh, a diet plan and, you know, you should definitely take advice from people when they tell you to eat healthy. And you're, if you have staff, they will definitely be trying to help you make health choices and make things that are healthy for you. And you should get a say on um, what you, what, what, what those meals are, right? There should be kind of a plan that you agree with, you know, this is what we're going to eat and you even help out with the shopping if you can. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, even though I would prefer that you eat healthy, if you want to eat a cookie once in a while, that's totally your choice. Um, nobody can tell you exactly what you must eat. We can only give you suggestions on what, you know, we think that you should eat. Unless, like I said, there's some kind of severe medical or health reason why, or safety reason uh, why you can't. What if my doctor puts me in a diet? My doctor will usually make a recommendation that will help me to be healthy. I can choose whether or not to follow his or her advice. If my doctor makes a recommendation I don't agree with, I should discuss it with him or her and my team and try to come up with something I can follow. So, uh, you know, uh, we have all gotten advice from doctors and oftentimes we still make choices that uh, don't necessarily necessarily uh, align with what the doctor is telling us. That's uh, probably not a great idea and I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and you know if they're asking you to do things that are completely unreasonable then that definitely needs to be discussed, right? Um, but again, you have the right to make these choices for yourself. Communication. I should always be able to contact the people I want to talk to. I should have privacy whenever I'm using the phone, texting, sending email, using social media, or any other form of communication. So again, um, your phone is your property. Um, and again, unless there is a overwhelming safety issue that the team has discussed and has discussed with you and everybody's aware of, um, there should be no uh, going through your things, um, you have a right to privacy, people shouldn't be scanning your emails, people shouldn't be look, seeing what you're surfing online if you want to surf online or whatever, um, unless there's a history of, you know, uh, maybe you've been meeting up with people online who are strangers and that's not safe, so if you have a history of that though, it would be discussed with your team and you would be on board with it and uh, they would make sure that there was a plan to help you with that, uh, rather than something that someone um, pushes on you arbitrarily, right? Uh, 
anytime anybody messes with your rights, uh, the whole team has to agree. Otherwise, that's not going to happen, no matter what the excuse is. And if it does happen, you should record it and speak to people about it. No one should post my picture online or in places outside my home without my consent. No one should give my address to anyone without consent. Um, so you have a right to privacy. We can't take your picture and post it in the company newsletter without your permission or without your guardian's position um, permission, if that's the case. Um, so yeah, that's uh, something called HIPAA. Uh, if people are posting your stuff, or you find out that they are, uh, especially if they work uh, in this field, uh, if they're any of your staff or anything, you get in a lot of trouble for that. So. Privacy. I should have privacy when I sleep. I should have privacy when I am taking care of my hygiene, getting dressed, or using the bathroom. So same thing here. Um, you have a right to privacy. Nobody should be staring at you while you sleep unless, again, there's an overwhelming safety issue with you being alone in your bed. Um, and the history and your team's aware of it and everybody's signed on it. And, you know, um, Again, though, this shouldn't be just something that arbitrarily happens where your staff decides, oh, we're just going to start watching you now. You know, um, you definitely have a right to a reasonable level for privacy. If I need help with hygiene, getting dressed, or using the bathroom, I should feel comfortable with the staff person who's helping me. If I am uncomfortable with a particular staff helping me, then someone else should have to step in. Um, so I worked at a group home, and it was mostly ladies, uh, and some of them need help. Um, to the extent that any of them were comfortable with that, I helped out. If they expressed uncomfort with that, then I would definitely go get a female staff member to assist them. Um, they may have to wait till staff is available for sure, but at the end of the day, uh, if you're not comfortable with a certain staff helping you out with your hygiene, that's completely your right. Um, and if it's happening against your will, you should definitely speak to a staff member speak to their supervisor, speak to somebody here at the Center of Hope, uh, we might be able to guide you as well. Visits. I should be able to have visitors in my home. If a visitor comes to see me, then staff should find me and ask if I want that person to come. I should have privacy when visitors come to see me. <coughs> I should also be also able to have visitors in my bedroom. Plus there's a need to protect you from harm that's based on the historical, uh, you know, behavior or whatever. Um, and the teams all discussed it and, you know, you're on board with it. Again, uh, people have to have a serious reason to limit your social interactions. Um, this is a big issue because uh, uh, people have in the past, uh, made up excuses why you shouldn't be able to see this person or that person or maybe they're uncomfortable with you meeting with a person privately in your room for whatever reason maybe they have uh, you know objections to it morally but really that's your choice what are restrictions restrictions are any limits or controls placed on something sometimes our rights may be limited to keep us safe those who support me should make sure that at least the least restrictive op options are used. Again, least restrictive options are used. So whatever the bare minimum is to keep you safe, that's what should be going on. Restriction examples. I have the right to have visitors, but if my friend shows up at the house and is drunk and threatening to hurt me, then you don't have a right to see that person because they're not being safe. I have the right to use the telephone, but if I use the phone to call 911 a lot unnecessarily, just because I like to, and when there really is no emergency, so if you have a history of calling 911, uh, you know, uh, and there's no emergency, they may limit your access to the phone. You may have to be supervised while using the phone. I have the right to use my possessions when I want, but if I wanted to use my iPad to get the in on the internet and contact strangers and invite them to my house, that's uh, terribly unsafe. You should not invite people to your house online, and if you're doing that, uh, and you're not redirectable, you know, uh, uh, then, you know, they may have to supervise your online activity. Before a restriction is official, this is what must happen. I or my guardian must give consent. My ISP team must approve. The Human Rights Committee must approve. My doctor sometimes has to approve. So if it's a health issue, your doctor would have to get approval too. What can I do? 
I can ask questions about why the restriction is necessary. I can help the team develop a plan to get rid of the restriction. I can talk to my head of human rights, uh, talk to my human rights advocate if I don't feel the restriction is necessary. So definitely, um, as I said before, the squeaky wheel gets grease. So if you feel like someone is violating your rights, um, I would continue to bring it up to as many people as possible until you get a satisfying uh, result. My responsibilities. Know my rights. Know who to get um, go to for help. Speak up to, uh, to let others know what I need. Be active in my services and supports. Okay, so as I said, you know, I had the example of the guy who wanted to read his reports or he wanted someone to read them to them. So um, you should be doing that if you feel like, uh, unless you feel like, if you feel like you're being treated unfairly, for sure, you should know what your rights are. Um, you should definitely know what's going on in your meetings to the extent that you can. Um, and people should be explaining them to you. Uh, treat others with respect. Understand that I share my home or space with others. Use my possessions in legal, safe, proper ways. Understanding that I may have to wait for some things that I want. So if you live in a group home or if you live in a house with other people, you can't just have everything when you want all the time. You got to make compromises as far as time. You should definitely get your things when you need them eventually, but I mean, you know, depending on some circumstances, you may have to just wait. I might understand that my choices have consequences. If I stay awake all night, I may be too tired to go to work the next day. If I spend all my money on cigarettes, I may not have enough money to go to the movies with my friends. If I don't do my laundry, I may not have clean clothes to wear when I want to go out. So um, you have consequences that affect your, your own ability to live your life independently. So uh, if you stay awake all night um, and then you don't go to the work to work the next day, you know, no one's going to give you a paycheck, right? Those are just called natural consequences. Who can help me? Your human rights officer or advocate can help you. Uh, human rights coordinator, human rights specialist, staff, service coordinator, family member, friend, someone I feel comfortable with. So if you're not sure who these people are, um, at the Center of Hope, well, we can definitely get those names for you. Um, if you're concerned about other staff in uh, other uh, places that you, you know, maybe at your group home or whatever, um, then you would talk to the talk to the uh, house manager. Uh, or barring that, you could also talk to your service coordinator. Who else can help me? All right, these are some phone numbers. Uh, I'm not going to read them all out here, but. Uh, if you are interested, you can always go back to this video and pause it and get these numbers. So these are human rights specialists at, uh, at the Office of Human Rights, and there's also the director's number. So you have the director's number, and then depending on what region you are, if you call any of these numbers, though, they can direct you. So let's say you're not in Central Rest, rest Region, and you call this number, and they'll go, oh, well, you need South Region. They would just give you this number. But, you know, certainly you can call um, any of those numbers, and they would probably eventually get you the right person. Frequently asked questions. The answers to the following questions may be different for someone who needs more support and assistance safely. These answers are not. <clears throat> if these answers are not true for me, then I can notify my human rights advocate and then contact my service coordinator to find out why. Do I have the right to vote? Yes, if you are a U.S. citizen. Uh, if you are registered to vote, then you have the right to vote. But what if I have a guardian? Guardian. Most people who have a guardian can still vote. Check your guardianship decree. Someone can read it to you. Uh, you can vote unless it says you can't. Can I go to school? Yes. If you have the money to pay for tuition and expenses, you can go to school. Uh, if I apply and get, get accepted. So you have to be accepted and be able to pay for it. Can I get a job? Yes. If you apply and get hired, you can get a job. Can I buy, buy a car and a house? Yes, if you have the money to buy them, if all of the necessary bills are paid. Do I have the right to a girlfriend or boyfriend? Yes, yes, yes. You can even get married. Again, if that's something you're interested, talk to your team. Can I have a pet? Yes, if you have the money to buy one. If I am able to take care for it myself, not your staff, so you can't just buy a dog and then expect your staff to take care of it for you. You have to be able to take responsibility for it. That means food, water, medical visits, uh, and cleaning. If your landlord agrees. So if you live in a house that's uh, rented, you know, uh, 
your landlord may have a say in whether or not you can have a pet. And if your housemates agree. So if one of your housemates has a severe allergy to dogs, you're probably not going to get a dog. Do I have to eat what my staff made me for dinner? No. You should eat what you want. Uh, I should be offered something different. If I can, I should be involved in the cooking so that I can make sure my meals are prepared the way I want. So, you know, if you know are paying attention to what they're making and then uh, they put it in front of you and then you say, oh, I don't want that. Well, I mean, yes, they'll probably make you something else that you probably should be involved in. You know, when you smell what they're making and you go over there and you go, what are you making? And they're like, well, we're making this. And you go, well, I don't want that. So, you know, you should definitely give the courtesy to tell your staff ahead of time. If my pack, uh, staff don't practice the same religion as me, do they still have to take me to my church or other places of worship? Yes. Staff are paid to support you and to help you get the things you need. Uh, you should be supported in your places of worship. So uh, if you want to go to church on Sunday morning and church is at 9 o'clock, they need to be making sure there's enough staff to cover those days most times. There may be rare exceptions where someone calls out or something, but generally speaking, you should be able to go to church if you want to go to church or wherever you worship. Uh, what if I don't like my house? Can I move? Yes, if there are available room in the houses that meet your needs. Um, you should definitely bring that up at your ISP meeting. If your question was not included in this presentation, then contact the Human Rights Advocate who works with you. Always talk to your team. So again, this training was produced by the Center for Developmental Disabilities Evaluation and Research on behalf of Massachusetts Department of Development Services with the support of the Massachusetts Advocates Standing Strong, and I'm just representing it for you uh, so you can take a look. If you have any questions, give me a call. Uh, or send me a text or an email, you know how to get a hold of me. If you don't, we'll see you at work. You can get a hold of me then.